Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Iris Nebula or NGC 7023 or Coldwell 4, as it is also called. As the daylight is taking over and the season is soon coming to an end up here at 63 degrees north, I'm looking for these few last objects to photograph before it is too late. I wanted to be able to capture a few broadband targets and I settled on the Iris Nebula, since it is located due north and that I'm able to photograph it all night. I was fortunate enough to have some nights and was able to capture a lot of hours in LRGB filters. So join me over in Pix Insight and I will give you a brief uh, description of my processing steps as well as reveal the final image, of course. I captured this data during four different sessions ranging from January until March. It is a total of uh, 141 frames with a mix of two and five minutes for each of the L, R, G and B filters. Uh, I have a total integration time of 7.7 .7 hours for this target. For this particular target, I did a drizzle integration and that is something that you can utilize if you are using dithering with your guiding and image acquisition. So when doing your normal registration of your images using star alignment, you check uh, generate drizzle data. And when you integrate your light frames, you select your drizzle files and after the initial integration you can go up to processes here all processes and you can use drizzle integration and then you simply add your uh, drizzle files and it will do a drizzle integration and that basically means that I have doubled my resolution for this image. As you can see, I have a resolution of 8288 5644, and that is double what I normally have. So I'm going to use that to crop this target to get somewhat of my regular resolution but at 
uh, low cost of quality in the image. Reason I want to do that is because the target here in the middle is fairly a uh, small target and I only have 510 millimeter focal length here and I've also got some issues with light pollution for some of the frames as you can see here in oh, mostly in the green here you can see that we have a lot of light pollution at the edges here so I want to be able to crop that out and not be bothered by a lot of processing and masking. This is the luminous filter. I'm simply going to show you one filter at this stage because I processed all exactly the same. So for this, I've actually already done the dynamic crop and cropped it down fairly good. Uh, I've also done the dynamic background extraction here to remove some of the background, even though it, it's not that much background in this image when cropped. Next, I did a linear fit and I actually used the luminance as uh, the master for that. So all of the other frames, the RGB was adjusted in brightness according to the luminous filter. Next step is the uh, blur exterminator. That is somewhat of a standard uh, component in my processing workflow these days. And we can compare. So the left here is before and the right here is after the blur exterminator. As you can see, on the stars here. And the final step in that workflow is the noise exterminator to eliminate some of the noise in the background. If you zoom in, you can compare the two images and you can clearly see here that the image on the left here is before the noise exterminator and the image on the right is after noise exterminator. Now these images was of course uh, subjected to a stretching, converting them into a non-linear mode to uh, continue the processing. As a first step in the non-linear phase, I did a, another crop. So the first crop was actually just to remove the stacking artifacts. And now I actually cropped the target as I wanted it. So you can see that we are much more zoomed in now on the actual iris nebula in the middle here. So this is the starless versions of each filter. We have the luminance here with the most detail, the red, green, and blue. And as you can see, we have some residual artifacts or light pollution. Or it just might be that we are catching data in the green filter here. I did not do as much processing before the integration of L, R, G, and B as I normally do. And I guess that that is just because that there is a lot of data in this image and you don't actually see that much background. So it's hard to tell what is nebulosity here and what is actual background. This is the uh, first raw integration, LRGB, and this is the uh, starless integration. And I integrated uh, the stars separately for LRGB stars. 
Now I'm going to use that later on. So I'm closing that for the moment. So I am um, used my normal routine or most of it anyway, because that is uh, mainly for narrowband targets. And since this is a broadband target, the uh, steps might differ a bit. First thing I did though was to adjust the colors of the image. Removing some of the green in here and some of the magenta down in the corner. Um, I'm thinking that this is some kind of light pollution in the broadband filters. Uh, I get some lights from my neighbors and once in a while a passing car might also interfere with my photographing. So that might be it. Uh, I really wanted to take care of the dark dust here in front of this nebulosity. That is a major feature of this target, I would say. So next step after adjusting the colors was to do the um, sharpening of the image. Now this is fairly subtle, just to ever so slightly sharpen the details in here. Next step, uh, reduce noise in the image. Let me zoom in on this dark piece of dust. You can see that there is a slight and but subtle noise reduction here on the dark dust compared to the left original first integration. I didn't do much more processing. I did some more adjustment of the colors, making the center here pop out a bit more, adjusting some of the blue shades that is illuminated here in this reflection nebula by the massive young star in the middle here. For these type of targets, you really want uh, RGB stars, or in this case, LRGB stars, but they can be quite overpowering, I would say. Uh, that is why I have a, adjusted the strength of the stars in this right image. So before integration, we hopefully have a, a well-balanced strength on the stars in comparison to the main object in the middle here. And this is the final integration. After some final curves adjustments, since uh, the uh, pixel matte script also adds some brightness, I had to lower this uh, just uh, a little bit. Uh, I'm fairly happy with the results here, even though I would have wanted uh, much more of this dark dust. Uh, there is dust all around this target, even to the right here, but that is not showing up. Uh, in these uh, in this image so this is the iris nebula shot over a period of four nights january to march 2023 141 frames for lrgb 7.7 .7 hours in total and hopefully I can add to this target next season and see if I can bring out some more of that fabulous uh, dark dust in front of this fascinating uh, reflection nebula uh, that is uh, lit up by the massive blue star in the middle here.
Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already doing so. If you want to support this channel and the work with these videos, there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video, I wish you have clear skies. Thank you.